We appreciate you joining us. Um, my name is Dominique. Everyone calls me Dom. I own Terrapin with my mom, Anne Marie, and we're going to be doing the demonstration together today. I just thought I would take one moment to sit down real quick and talk to you all because I think that we're doing these live demos, but you don't actually get a chance to see us and meet us. Um, we own Terrapin Glass. Um, mother daughter team over here and it is just us as of right now um, when we're doing these live streams for instance there isn't a camera person we've got our phones on tripods we've got ipads going we are live on facebook and instagram at the minute um, so we do appreciate you tuning in and spending your time with us and we also appreciate your patience on any technical um, glitches that might occur as in Facebook doesn't like to work for me sometimes, so we're late again. We are in a really loud space right now, so I do have a microphone going, and I do realize that sometimes there's a lot of background noise. I have been getting a couple of comments with people complaining about that, but there's nothing I can do about the background noise. We're just simply doing the best we can, and I got this funny workout mic going on. I did want to take a moment before we jump into this demo to talk about what we do do. And what we do a lot of are these memorials, and this is something that we really want to focus our business on more. While going live on Facebook is quite fun, it doesn't make us any money. It actually costs us a few hundred dollars every week when we do this. Um, we do it simply because we like connecting with you. But the way that we make our income and survive are we do these memorials. So you see this is a paw print sun catcher and inside are ashes. So if you've lost somebody or a pet or you know somebody that's lost somebody, perhaps you could consider giving us their, our, giving them our contact information because that is the way that we're surviving as a small business in the middle of a pandemic. Another way that we're surviving is we're teaching classes. So I've got some straws right here and this is my newest class that I'm starting to teach. So you can come in and I sit you down on your own torch and I show you how you can decorate your own straws. These are COVID safe classes. We're under really strong ventilation and everyone is wearing masks. So I know I have a lot of really thoughtful followers and COVID is obviously a big concern. And just to relieve you of that concern, everybody has their own independent ventilation and everybody in our studio is always wearing masks. So as I say that, as you can see, I'm not wearing a mask right now. There's nobody else in our space and we don't actually let the public in this hot shop area. When we have guests in here, we do wear masks, but I thought it was nice for you to be able to see my face as I do this demo, because as I said, it's just my mom and I in here. This week, we're going to be popping pup corn in a large bowl but we also made some bunny rabbits and these are what I'm gonna do next week and we have a whole bunch in the kiln right now so they'll be cooled down I'll grind them and they'll be available for sale I'm not sure what else I'm gonna do with these bunnies but I was thinking maybe we could put it on a mountain or maybe put it in a snow globe but do something fun for them for the demo next week. So I'm totally open to input if anyone has any input on that. But enough talking, I know you're here to see glass blowing, so I'm gonna jump right in and we're gonna make a bowl. Here we are in the hot shop, first of all. The hot shop is where we work on the end of long rods. As I said before, we aren't actually teaching here in the hot shop. We're only teaching in the flame shop as of right now. The hot shop is not very COVID friendly. Um, we're working in really close quarters as a team and there is often physical blowing involved. So that's not something that I feel comfortable doing in the middle of a pandemic. Unlike the flame shop where everyone has their own space, they have their own independent ventilation and it's a lot less of a risk. But we like doing these live demos because you can join us in here. So I've got a hollow blow pipe and it's clogged, which is why I check. So sometimes little bits of glass fill up the end of the blow pipe and it's clogged. But here I have one that's not. And the tip of the blow pipe is hot because the glass won't stick to it unless it's hot. So it's preheated. Maybe I'll warm it up just a smidge more 
and then I'm going to go get glass out of my furnace. So my furnace runs at 2,200 degrees, and I've been lucky enough to not shut it down throughout the whole pandemic. When I do shut it down, we're out of business for about a month. So I think I might do that in August to do some repairs. The last time we shut down was over a year ago. We shut down the week of Valentine's Day for emergency repairs. And it was quite stressful, but we got everything back up and running just in time for Valentine's Day before COVID. But inside of there is a big ceramic pot full of melted clear glass. I've got what we would call a gather of clear glass right here. And maybe it looks orange to you, but that's just because it's really hot. I was going to add color to this piece, but I admit we had a lot of fun making a lot of bunnies today and I didn't leave room for it in the kiln. So there's no room for it to cool down. What do we say about bunnies multiplying, right? Well, the bunnies took up all the room. So I'm going to do it in clear, and that way I'll be able to recycle it. I've got it organized. And now I forced some air into the end of the blowpipe and captured it with my thumb. As the air travels up the blowpipe, the heat causes it to expand, and we get our bubble. Now this is hollow. Pretty cool, right? This would be the amount of glass that one would use to make an ornament. In order to make enough popcorn to have it be something fun, we're gonna go and get some more glass. But the only way I can go back in the furnace is when this glass is cold. Otherwise, I could drop all this glass in the furnace, lose my bubble, Thankfully, I don't have any color, so I wouldn't make any of my future customers cranky by finding my color in the furnace, but I would once more lose my bubble. I'd have a big mass of glass and no bubble. In order to not have that issue, I'm letting it get cold. And I say cold with quotations. You can hear it's cold, but this is about as close as my hand can get and it's really, really hot. It's well over a thousand degrees. Now I'm gonna go back in my furnace once more. Inside of my furnace is a big ceramic pot. When it's full, it holds 145 pounds of melted clear glass and it runs at 2,200 degrees. My pipe is a little hot from going deep down in the furnace, trying to clean out some of the glass at the bottom today, so I'm letting the level get a little low. So over here I have like a sprinkler or a little water, and we call it the pipe cooler. And I'm just simply running the water along the pipe so that I can grab a little bit closer up. So my left hand is about burning right here any closer and I'm definitely burning but this allows me to hold on to this glass so this is actually quite heavy if I hold down here it, I really can't manage it but I can move up closer and if you know about science and about holding things a little bit closer it allows the weight to be more manageable I've got a block that's made out of fruit wood and it hangs out in water. I buy this from a company in the west coast. And as the glass is rolling on the wood, it creates steam and it allows me to make it a lot more organized. So I'll let you see what we got going on here. I've got some thick glass and a little bitty baby bubble inside. But it's time to start letting that bubble get bigger. The only way to do that is to first heat it up because it's cold again, cold. Then I'm going to cool the bottom and continue blowing it out. 
if you're watching this, I am open to any questions or comments. I'm also open to suggestions on what you think our bunny rabbit should sit on. Should it sit on a mountain? Or should I put it in a snow globe? Or maybe I should make a little bunny rabbit scene with a tree? Or maybe you all have ideas that are way outside of the box that I can't even think of because I've been trying to think about it all day long. So it's nice to have opinions. It's also really great to have questions. We are so lucky to have the most thoughtful customers and followers. I really appreciate y'all. And I love having all your input. Honestly, we've only had a couple of trolls in these three or so months that we've been going live every week. And we get around two to 3,000 people that watch. And to have only a couple of mean people, that's totally cool. And guess what? They have freedom of speech, but I also delete their comments. So I think that I win. I'm sucking out all the heat from the bottom of the dish by rolling on the table. And then I'm spinning and blowing to enlarge it. And you see it's getting bigger, right? Pretty cool. You want to untangle the blow hose and you can pull this out of the way. Glass blowing in here is very much a team sport. Ideally, there's a person making a piece and they have one or two assistants. So my mom and I have been working alone during COVID. Can I have that? which has been great for us to get to spend time together. But it also means that we're both kind of doing a lot when we do this. She's doing the job of two people. I'm doing a lot of things at once, trying to work and talk at the same time. Trying not to make a fool of myself live on Facebook and Instagram. Trying not to mess up the piece, right? So there's a lot of ways we can mess up a piece. First of all, we can not work with gravity. We see how hot this is. I could bump it on something. I could drop it. I could let my bubble collapse. So every time we make something, there's a risk that it could be what we would call a sacrifice to the glass gods. Because we are humans and things definitely break. I've got a blow hose on the end that saves my mom from having to duck down and blow into the end of my pipe. But it's also just adding another thing for me to do. So right now I'm spinning with my left hand. I'm using my tools with my right hand. And I'm talking and blowing almost all at the same time. but it's getting bigger. Now for the people that have seen a demo before, just ignore this part, but the people that haven't, this will be the lip of the dish. This will be what sits on the table. So it's actually upside down right now. Can you rub wax on those? So I'm making the lip while I'm blowing it out. We call that the neckline. And the tool called the Dax, when it gets hot, it sounds like nails on a chalkboard. So what my mom was doing was rubbing wax on the blades. It smells real nice, but it also lubricates them so that y'all don't have to listen to that terrible, terrible sound. but I have a pretty nice ball right here. For anybody that's ever taken a class with me before COVID, my joke is that a ball starts at all. So at this point, this could become anything, but we're gonna leave it round to make it a dish. If I wanted to make a vase, then perhaps I'd swing it so that gravity would pull it longer. If I wanted to make a cup, it would be pretty big, but actually that would be a really 
cool St. Paddy's Day idea, right? A massive cup. I would also swing that too, perhaps. Make it a little more long as well. And I'm just waiting for it to get a little more stable. Then we're gonna put a little foot on the bottom just for fun. Flash. My mom's gonna babysit the piece. If it gets too cold, it's gonna break. So she's doing what we call flashing, which is just sticking the glass in the heat for a moment, making sure that it doesn't get too cold and crack, which would ruin our fun. I've got a little bit of hot glass from the furnace and I'm gonna plop it on the table. We call this a cookie foot. If you've watched any of my demos, you're probably an expert on that. I tend to use them a lot. Plopping it on the bottom in the middle the best I can. Now I have a little platform. For our dish to sit on. And I'll show you what I got in just a minute. I'm using all clear because like I said, I don't have room in my kiln for this to cool down slowly, so it's gonna break. But if I'm using clear, it'll allow me to recycle it later. So it's gonna sit like this. Now we're gonna throw the popcorn inside. But first we gotta flip it over and open it up just a smidge. Yeah, we got the popcorn. And just for an FYI, I've only done this once and it was about five years ago when I burned the popcorn. But if you know anything about me, I burn everything, including food. But my mom's a good cook, so perhaps we'll get it right. I think the trick will be to let the glass be cold. And once more, that cold should be in parentheses because if it's too cold, it's gonna smash and explode and break. So relatively speaking, cold. Wanna flash that real quick? I'm making what's called a punty, and I'll show you all in a sec. A punty is a solid rod with an itty bitty baby glass on it. And now you're gonna see my bub right in the middle for a minute. You can let go. So I put the punty on the bottom in the middle the best we can. Roll around, try to get it on center. And then I'm gonna drop water on my neckline. And I apologize. Once more, we don't have a camera lady. We're pretty low tech here. So every once in a while, you get funny views. But I dump water on the lip and then I give it a little tap. Vibration then breaks our glass at its weakest point. When all goes according to plan, our weakest point is on the top. Sometimes, as you can imagine, our weakest point may be the punty. And you'll do that a lot of times if you're choosing to pursue glass blowing as a hobby or even as a career. Glass breaks and that's just part of the game. You can just, we won't worry about that. My mom was grabbing a paddle. Typically when we open up glass, we use a wooden paddle to smooth out the lip. But because we're not saving this, I was just communicating with her that we're not gonna do that part. That way you'll be able to see it open just a little bit more without having the paddle in the way. But if we're making this as a product, we'd work as a team to make sure the lip opens up smooth and round. What I'm doing right now is I'm just heating up that lip to open it up just a little bit more so we can fit the popcorn inside. Now I'm doing that in my reheating furnace. This is hotter than my regular furnace, but I turn it on and off every day. And notice I'm heating the lip every once in a while. I'm flashing the bottom in the heat so that my punty doesn't get too cold. And this heat does take a little while. We always call it the hurry up and wait step. You gotta hurry up, get the punty on, get it over here in the heat, 
but then you sit and wait for the heat to really soak in. Remember, I dumped a bunch of water up there, so it got cold enough to break. Now I need it hot enough to move again. Got a lot of heat in there, so I'm putting my little jacks or these tongs inside. And as I roll, it opens up. And we got a pretty good dish. You wanna grab a glove? So I think I'm gonna flash this and we're gonna let it cool down a little more. And then we're gonna pop our popcorn. So I wanna see it before. And it's actually kind of nice that we're using clear because then hopefully you'll be able to see it a little bit better. And this glass is so hot that we really can't get close. Let it cool down just a little bit more. We should keep heating or... Oh, we got it! <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't recycle this dish. <laughs> and we burnt it a little. But it looks kind of cool, right? So... This glass, if we wanted to save it, I would need to put it away in my annealer or my hot kiln, which would hold it at 960 degrees and it would come down really slowly to room temperature. But because I filled it with bunnies and I have no room, we're just gonna let this break. So typically I'd put water on the punty. <laughs> Let's put some water on the top. Or did anybody see my demo last week when we made an egg. It's fun to break things, right? That's why I have yeah. Yay! Thanks so much, everyone. I appreciate you spending your time with us. Like I said, next week, I'm going to have a whole bunch of bunnies for sale up on our website. And I thought because Easter's coming, we could do a bunny rabbit demo. And I thought we could do something fun with a bunny, make it a little more fancy. So maybe we can make a bunny landscape scene or we can put a bunny in a snow globe. Or I want to hear all of your opinions on what you see. Also your opinion on what color bunny you would like. But otherwise, we really appreciate you tuning in. We seriously have the best followers and customers ever, and we're so grateful for you. Um, feel free to check out our website and sign up for a class if you want to come and join us. Bye. Bye.